Ash Holmes, if your art had a go-to outfit, what would it be? It would be loose fitting. Wouldn't have a lot of structure to it. I'd say the fabric would be translucent linens or silk um, or a soft cotton. And I think the outfit itself would be very layered, like a Rick Owens style to that kind of relaxed linen-y fit. Yeah. Nice, yeah. very comfortable yet stylish. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> When did you first notice your art? When I was quite young, was like year four, somewhere in primary school, I kind of realized that I really connected with my art. Yeah, and saw it as something that I felt I could grow with, yeah. Was it a slow burn or was it quite hot and fast? It was always a slow burn for me. I feel like with my work, I was always working on it and always doing bits and pieces. So it wasn't like a one day decision. This is what I'm going to do. It was always in my life for a long time. Yeah. And how long were you dating for before you committed to your art? I would say probably seven years. Yeah. Well, throughout school, I was not committed to it as it was the only thing I had going on until I guess moved in with my art and found a studio and that was the commitment okay. was finding my studio and that was when I was 19 yeah so before that it was quite a casual um passion and yeah. love yeah. yeah and when you committed were there other things that you had to give up Yes, uh, opportunities with like moving out with friends um, because of rent. I, I had a rent already, so having two rents wouldn't have worked financially. So I'd say a lot of my um, time and savings and um, opportunities to go places or things were kind of cut short because I did want to put them into my work yep. and my practice. Yep. Yeah. What's one of the craziest things you've done for your art? I traveled to Marbella, Spain when I was 22 to see two of my works in a group exhibition. And when I got there, no one was really speaking English. Um, I was with one friend, so we didn't know anyone. And it was a huge show. So it was, um, it was, yeah, it was an amazing experience. But when I got there, I was like, this is a bit crazy that I came to this. <laughs> I just hopped on a plane yeah. and gone across yeah. the world. <laughs> and even the curator was like, oh, wow, you came. Oh, hello. <laughs> you didn't need to come. And I, was, I just wanted to see them. And I think um, I also did a small trip around that trip. So, yeah, that was, that was pretty crazy. But glad I went. Yeah. How did you feel standing in there? in an art gallery in Spain looking at two of your works? Well, I felt quite out of my comfort zone because they also lost my bag for the flight, the, um, the domestic flight in from, where was it, Barcelona to there. So I also had to go and pick out a very random look last minute. So it also wasn't even in my own things. Um, and yeah, like you're, you have no mutual friends. So you're introducing yourself to everyone for the first time from, from scratch. So yeah. it felt, it felt very new, but it also felt very refreshing because I had to be out of my comfort zone and kind of have my identity on display for the first time for everyone over there. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever fallen out of love with your art? No, no. It's like my refuge. It's just the one, or maybe not the one thing, but it's the, the part of my life that continues to unravel and give more and more. I don't ever feel like I've had resentments or a rough patch with it. And if I have had moments of not feeling connected to it, it's not been a bad stage. It's just meant that something else is about to come of it. Yep. Yeah. 
in those initial feelings of not being connected, do you, did you, it sounds like you don't now, but in, in the earlier days, did you ever get an anxiety of, oh my God, we're, it's, this is dis I'm disconnecting? I feel like for me, so when I first left school, I wanted to be a tattoo artist, which is very different to what I'm doing now. Uh, but I couldn't really work out when I left that desire to be a tattoo artist and draw in that way. That's how I used to do was quite fine, small drawings and really, um, really detailed and they'd take forever and then jump into being really drawn to large abstract mm -hmm. works. It was a hard jump to work out like how to get there but it's just been baby steps. Yeah, okay. So the growth of that was different and I probably had a bit of a muddy stage in between where my yeah. practice was changing, but yeah. it was discovery So and like the mystery of it. So it wasn't ever a bad stage. It was more just a curious stage. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Have you ever cheated on your art? No. With another art form? <laughs> no. I've always, it's always been the priority one. Yeah. Yeah. So I was a barista for five years, but even like when I would make coffee, I felt like you're still making mm. and you're still doing an art form. There's an art form to yeah. it. Yeah. So the jobs that I've had, I've seen or felt somewhat of an art form in them, whether or not it presents itself like that initially. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like my mind kind of defaults back to my practice, whatever I'm doing. Whatever you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow. How do you woo your art to sort of get really connected to it? I'd say with quality time. Mm. Like if my art had a love language, it would probably be quality time. That's a great, what <laughs> is your art love language? I love that yeah, quality time, yes. I feel like for me, I'm journal a lot yep. I sketch a lot mm -hmm. at home um, and wherever I am and that's a way of me kind of working out what my paintings will look like or how they'll start before I'm in my studio doing them okay and the more time I put into the back thought of it the more that the painting gives and the more layers mm -hmm. and consideration it has okay so I'd say when I'm not journaling as much, I can feel it in the studio. So if I'm busy and I'm not prioritizing that as like me time and downtime, that's when I feel it. So probably to woo my art back would be, it, it's almost like it feels the attention that mm. goes into it. Mm. Um, so it wouldn't be about new materials or anything like that. It's just about the quality of the time spent doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And do you have a certain time of day that you're like, okay, this is journaling time or like, you know, do you wake up in the morning and journal or is it, how does it fit into sort of the schedule? Yeah. So I have a few um, notebooks everywhere at the, like all going at the same time. And a lot of my journaling is like late at night mm. or it doesn't happen to me as much now, but I used to wake up with a lot of painting ideas really early. Like, 5 a.m. Okay. So I'd quickly sketch what the composition would look like and do like little arrows of color with what that color would be. Um, but yeah, that's probably, yeah, the yeah. time of night, it would probably be nighttime time, more now. Yeah. yeah, when I'm like, it's the end of the day yeah. and that's when everything's done. And I, I like doing that at night because the next day I've got direction. Yeah. 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 Kind of the end of the day, all the tabs are closed in your mind yeah. and you can kind of just... And it's quiet yeah. and the busyness of the middle of the day is done, yeah. 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 What is your top tip for keeping the passion alive in the studio? Apart from quality time, for me, I have to remind myself this often, but it's to clean my studio mm -hmm. and continue to... Like, the organised chaos is different. It's like making sure that my studio is respected and that I'm looking after it. And then therefore, if my space is clear around me and clear to me in the studio is just that like things are in their spots that I know that they live in, it would look messy to the outside eye, but then I feel like my paintings can kind of have that space around them and I go into it 
with a fresh mind, yeah, a clear mind. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. quality time and respect and care for the studio. Yeah. I think too, sometimes it doesn't hurt if you are wanting a little bit more of excitement or something to like look forward to when you're going to the studio. I might go buy like one new brush or something. And then it's like, you've just got that one new thing that you know you get to go use. Or I'll use something that I've never used before. Okay. So the, the lady that works at the art storm near me, she has no, she knows me quite well now and she'll get something in new and suggest it to me knowing that I might like it. Ooh. And I just trust her. I'll, I'll go, okay, I'll, I'll take one of those and see. And then it ends up leading me to so many more things. So I think being open to new materials, like not being stubborn to what I always use yep. uh, is a big one for me. Cause if I only used what I liked, then I'd only ever stay in my comfort zone of what I know. Yeah. Yeah. She's kind of like an art store clairvoyant. It's all so life. good. But she's just left. Oh, oh no. no. Where did no, she go? I know. She's gone up. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to have that. I'm just going to have to ask the, the oh, other no. girl. Oh, no. But she worked. She's worked there for... My mum worked at that shop when my mum was young. Oh, and she worked there. Oh, wow. So she was, has been there for like 30 years or something. Oh, my. Is she just retiring or she something? She just retired. Fair oh, enough. Fair, fair enough. She needs a bit of a break. Um, I have to probably just start... <laughs> Thinking of that myself. Maybe like, you could like call her and yeah, be like, hi. Hey, it's me. She's like, This has just come in the yeah. store. Do you think I'd like it? Yeah, yeah. FaceTime her. She's like, I don't know. Just go for it. She'd be like, Ash, please hang up. Yeah, just do it. It's one oil stick. Like, yeah. So that, oh that was a really like lovely connection. Yeah. Um, and I think those little conversations that you have with other people and artists can spark a light in you or a curiosity to try different ways of painting and not to be like narrow-minded in your ways too. Yeah. yeah. Ah, Ash Holmes, thank you yeah, for joining us. Thank you. Yeah.